And we are live. What's up, guys? It's Ruben on Connection Loop, Dub's podcast. Um, for those of you guys that do not know, Dub is a video communication platform. We allow people to quickly share, track, do the whole thing around their video, kind of calm and, and just building relationships. We're all about that. Check it out at dub.com. Today, we are going to be talking to David Ronald Alto. I love that name. It's so regal. Um, I love your hat. David, What what's going on, man? You've got a great purpose. Um, let's get into this. Talk to me about yourself. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I, you know, I got to, I guess I got to go back just a little bit to February of 2019 when, um, you know, I had had a LinkedIn uh, profile for years. I think I started one in 2012. But, um, you know, I got on the platform to you know, find a new job because the current company I was with, we were going to sell franchise, whatever, everything was up in the air. And I, you know, didn't want to wait around. So got back on LinkedIn, thought I was going to find um, my next career on LinkedIn. And well, I, I guess I did, but it, <laughs> it was for uh, finally working for myself uh, and taking that leap of faith. Um, but it was because of the interactions and the relationships and learning and sharing on LinkedIn that allowed me within a fairly short period of time to find some other skills I was equally as good at as, uh, as I had been in my previous um, employer for almost uh, you know 20 years in that industry. Um, and LinkedIn, I guess the short of it, LinkedIn allowed me to kind of find my passion. So that's what I hope to share today. Well, that I mean, that's the perfect and most honest evolution of really what LinkedIn is for all of us, because LinkedIn, as we all know, it started out as a, as a job site. It was basically a, a glorified social resume and we put our information on there and then we could kind of check out other people's stuff really for, for job seeking uh, situations. Um, but what it has turned into, of course, is I think one of the most amazing content sharing platforms and, and networking sites, you know? So um, that's, a, that's a great kind of evolution. Um, what is it that you've discovered in that process? What have what have what have you found really? I mean, what kind of problem are you are you solving? Sure. So you know, I have always you know in my previous job and previous career, I, you know, I'd always consider myself a mentor, a trainer, um, just because of the positions that I was in, uh, mostly multi-unit, meaning you know, like a district manager overseeing multiple store locations and lots of the. Uh, lots of employees and direct reports. So, I mean, I've always had that, you know, mindset of, you know, developing training and always continuing to learn and share. So that's what I really allowed myself to do on LinkedIn. And I'm, I've always been given away free resume advice for decades. And so I started doing that for free on LinkedIn for probably about five months Thought I, I got pretty, uh, good at, uh, uh, being able to determine, you know, the path of a, of a, of an, empl of, um, somebody on LinkedIn that a client that really, again, could see them, you know, going, not just having a resume talking about their past and present, but, uh, having a resume that, uh, can really speak to the things that they want to do was really easy for me to help create. Um, and then as I learned and shared more on LinkedIn, uh, you know, I was learning more about that LinkedIn profile, knowing that people just don't take advantage of all the things that you can leverage on that profile to really uh, stand out from from the rest. And again, gave it away for months and months and months on LinkedIn until somebody that I was helping said, no, I'm going to pay you. And then after that, I didn't look back and I started charging and still doing you know, my nine to five job and my nine to five job was never a nine to five job, you know, working 55, 60 hours a week, yeah, five and a, five and a half days a week for a very long uh, period of time. But uh, doing uh, and then I did both for a while until uh, my nine to five got in the way of my uh, of uh, me. Five doing to nine. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, really got in the way. And uh, and then I left my corporate job uh, December 13th of 2019. Wow, man. So, so give me, give me the most kind of tactical advice that you can on how to, how to best optimize LinkedIn, my profile, my sure. sharing, my posting, what sure. have you learned? Well, let's talk, let's just talk about sharing. First of all, you know, most people say, you know, well, I'll share when I get good or I'll share or I'll do video when I get, you know, 
the you know i now have a gimbal which allows me to you know stabilize my videos <laughs> right but yeah. but i have it now right now i use you know a nice little software program that i have for my phone to you know put text on there and put some fancy stuff but in the beginning um it's really all about content and it's a very giving platform linkedin is but it's also a very forgiving meaning if you cough or sneeze or you screw up a little bit, people yeah. just, it, it's the content that matters. And if you want to wait until you buy this or do or learn how to use this app or whatever, you're never going to post. So you just kind of got to post it. So I would always say, share something that you're a subject matter expert in mm. and somebody is going to comment or, and find value. And if you've had, if you, if one person finds value in what you have provided, you have done your job exactly, and and then when it comes to uh you know the linkedin profile uh, i think people just don't know all the different things that you can do you can attach video you can attach different presentations that you've done um your headline right underneath your name doesn't have to be you know project manager at you know apple right it can be a little bit more so uh, people just do not take advantage of all the different things they they treat it like a resume but you can do again so much more on your um linkedin profile your about section is your opportunity to really talk about you you can type it and you can write it just like you're having a conversation with somebody telling them the amazing things that you have done um, and when it comes to resumes right now, um, people just aren't putting enough content. And then of course they're applying for jobs and going through the resume scanning software. And then of course, getting that rejection, uh, email back within a day or two saying, sorry that you've moved on. If you get it back within one or two, three days, it is only because you did not, uh, beat that, uh, scanning software. It doesn't mean that you can't do the job it means the computer thinks that you can't do it. Well, there's there's a couple of takeaways in in what you said uh, from my perspective. And number one is that people often are waiting until get to get until they get that one thing, whether it's a feeling, yeah. a level of confidence, you know, a physical good, some sort of a tool. You know, uh, I, I'm here to say, uh, whoever I might be, that none of that stuff is actually essential. I mean, the situation that I'm in right now, when I'm recording this video with you, I'm in a new potential video studio the place around me is a complete mess all that i have behind me is just a, a wrinkled piece of fabric <laughs> until i develop this studio i could have easily waited and i'm going to make the studio decent I, I intend to do that but uh, until then I, i'm not going to stop creating content i'm going to put a little fabric behind me i'm going to use my little amazon special podcast mic here you know these headphones which work really well and i'm going to i'm going to create my content because at the end of the day um, you know, it's about what we're talking about. So it's about the authenticity, about, about the information. It's not necessarily necessarily about the production value per se. Uh, the, the second takeaway that I have here is that I, I, I agree with you, man. LinkedIn is so powerful. There are so many different means to post content on LinkedIn. For example, one of the things that I've started to do was to post, I started to post documents. You know, I've never done that. I, I, I'm really good about posting videos. I'm really good about posting captions. I'm really good about posting articles. But one of the things that I have not done actually until today was posting documents. And documents really in this case is just a PDF. So I had a collection of, of eBooks for Dub on video marketing and how to you know best maximize your, your video communication efforts, sales, marketing, things like this. And we just decided to have a whole ca content calendar on ebook publishing on LinkedIn and so far so good. It's been really exciting. So. Yeah, no, I mean, again, and you know, people just don't know what and how to, um, you know, leverage their LinkedIn profile. Cause somebody just tells them, you know, put whatever's on your resume and, and, and go from there. But, uh, yeah, your LinkedIn profile can just be so much more. And if you're looking for a job, it just means that it's just going to, you're going to stand out against all those other people that, uh, cause they're going to look at your resume, your resumes, you know, you have to upload it to, in order to get, uh, you know, to get, to uh, get that interview, but let's face it. Most industries hiring manager, recruiter, they're going to check out your LinkedIn profile. And when it's that much better than everybody else's, then maybe you get that call. So, you know, there's a, there's a paradox here. There's a, there's a conflict though. 
that I hear about a lot, which is that, and it, and it really, I think, stems down to two kind of primordial things, which is survival and, and fear, which one could argue are, are one and the same, at least to a certain extent. Sure. And that is, if someone is in the job market, if someone is looking for a job, they are in a survival mode, okay? They need to get themselves into a new position. They need to get their bills paid, okay? And we've all been there before. And the longer it takes, the more difficult it becomes, right? And when you have that survival instinct, it's difficult to go in this happy, authentic, you know, very kind of value forward perspective, start to post content. It's, it's, it's challenging because people are like, I need a hustle. And what the heck am I doing recording a selfie video of we walk, walking down the street, giving people advice on how I'm a sure. thought leader when I'm really just an unemployed person right now <laughs> looking for a gig, right? And, and not to say that, you know, being employed is a requirement to being a thought leader. I mean, we all go through our transitions. So, sure. but, but that said, from a psychological, from an emotional perspective, people struggle with that a lot. It's very difficult, right? And then I think the second thing is that as you start to, quote unquote, maybe lose some confidence or, you know, get a little bit maybe down on yourself, a little bit concerned about your situation, you know, whether it's you have a situation and you need to grow your sales or you need to get yourself in a better employment situation, you know, there's fear, of course, right? So now yes. I'm, I'm scared or I don't feel comfortable. So how can, how can people get over some of those very instinctual feelings? I, I think that they have to hear of other maybe stories of others that, you know, that, that made it through. Uh, now, yes, it, it, the, in the perfect world, you know, you get on LinkedIn, you learn, you learn how to uh, optimize your profile, you learn how to make meaningful connections. And then that way, if you find yourself, you know, needing uh, gainful employment, you have a better, better track record. But um, I, I run into this quite often. And, I, and in fact, I ran into it uh, uh, yesterday. Yesterday, I offered for for the only reason of helping others to understand the resume scanning software, I offered the first 20 people to reply to my post that I will scan your resume. If you were unemployed, I will scan your resume versus a job description, send you the results, give you some, a little bit of advice. I'm not going to adjust anything on your resume, but I just want them to understand this one gentleman's like, David, I have a, I've applied for 150 jobs in the last two months. Uh, and none of them are calling me back and I scanned his resume versus the job description. And we found out that, you know, he needs to spend a little bit more time on his resume for each individual job. But yes, he was in that mode of, I just need to get out so many resumes, so many resumes. Um, I got him to understand that you have to slow down. And, and you have to slow down. And, and if you are seeking an employment and But if you were if you were to spend 10, 15 minutes, you know, a day, cut some Facebook time off or whatever, and spend on LinkedIn making some meaningful connections, or I'll give this little tip. People go after recruiters all the time on LinkedIn, and that is a total waste of time. If you see a job that posts today and you're unemployed, get on LinkedIn, search for people doing that same role at that same industry on LinkedIn, reach out to maybe eight or nine of them, ask them a few questions about their, um, you know, their feedback about the position, the culture of the company, and then maybe ask them based on the, your LinkedIn profile, do you think that you would be a good fit for this role? You're not sounding desperate. You're not sending them your resume. You're asking them some questions. And with so many employers that give out referral bonuses, this is a great way because I know this because uh, I earlier in 2019, I, I did this very thing. I did get an interview. Um, I didn't get the job, but um, I made a connection. That person, you know, uh, put in for a referral for me and I did get an interview. I didn't get, the, like I said, I didn't get the job, but I learned then some of the things to do. So that way you're not as frustrated because yes, most people say, well, LinkedIn's a waste of time because I'm unemployed. I'm emailing these recruiters and they never email me back. And that is right uh, because they are busy. So right. it's about doing the right things and it does not take, does not have to take that long 
um, to do some of the right things on LinkedIn to make some of those um, connections. Well, my, my suggestion always is, you know, precog the transitions in your life, you know, and invest into your personal brand. You know, we are not our employers. We are ourselves. We are our individuals. We are our, our own personal brands. So I always say, you know, have have 15 minutes a day, have 20 minutes a day to start pushing content out there, to start educating people, to start putting interesting things that people will benefit from. And as a result, you'll build your network up. People will trust you. They will get to know you. They will like you, you know. And as a result, when you're in a transition or when you're looking for your next gig or your next client or your next prospect, you'll have a network, you know. And that investment, I think, is one of the most important people, uh, most important thing that people can do. But unfortunately, a lot of people wait until they are in a need-based situation when they do that. So I always say, don't. Get yourself into that need situation, precog that, and and start posting today. It's not as hard as you think. Yes, and and I listen. Everybody's a subject matter expert in something, in something, and so put it, post that. Post, and then if you want to do video, don't do it. Excuse me, don't do video. Just again, post something that you're a subject matter expert on. Maybe something in the news or whatever that strikes up a you know an idea or whatever. But post something you're a subject matter expert on. Or if you're maybe new to LinkedIn, don't just hit the like. If you see, if you see content, if you see a post that you really like, engage with it. Tell that person, because what if it's their first time posting and you don't know that, right? You know, interact with that person and tell them what resonated with that post and why, you know, you commented, not just you know, like it and go away and think, because it's not all about the likes. Um, I could care less if I get any likes. I want to see other people reply, comment, learn, and maybe even I learn something from uh, uh, something that I post as well too. And that's when you, then you make meaningful connections. And I've met so many uh, amazing people that we've taken offline or we talk, you know, maybe it, we live very far, but we can zoom or get on the phone once in a while, but I've made genuine relationships um, from my time um, on LinkedIn that, that I cherish just like a friendship that you would make out in the real world, because, you know, where else can you go and meet hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people potentially, you know, within a short period of time, because when we all get in our car and go to our work, maybe we stop at Starbucks, say hello to the barista, go to work, come home. You know, we see the same people. But where do you get an opportunity to see so many unique uh, people than, like I said, on LinkedIn? So just like you said, spend a little bit of time every day and it will benefit you in well into the future. So here's a here's a little story that a lot of people do not know about, actually, which is that Dub actually started out as an employment tool. It started out as a means for people to be able to put pitch videos out to recruiters, basically, where someone could pitch themselves. They could say, look, this is what I do. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm looking for. Share that video. And then that recruiter could then watch it and then, of course, share it with, um, you know, the hiring managers. And it was a really interesting process because we saw high levels of success with um, with this sort of whole model. Um, we had we had an early early integration into LinkedIn, which we still have, which is probably one of my favorite integrations. Where it's it's basically a one to one video communication integration with LinkedIn, so it's kind of neat. But the problem that we had was that people weren't paying for the service, so they'd say, well. You know, may, maybe I have the money, maybe I don't have the money. And even if they did want to pay in the unlikely chance, then it was short lived because once they find their gig, then they were like, well, I don't necessarily need this tool anymore. So then we saw we had sort of a light bulb moment. We realized, well, well, everyone in business needs to be able to communicate with video, you know, one on one broadcast. So then we kind of said, OK, well, you know, job seekers, um, recruiters, that's that's one segment of our business, you know, and through a lot of our free tools, actually. You know, dub.com is a completely free um, option. Um, actually, the people that are using it for jobs, gigs, um, don't have to pay. <laughs> so I always recommend to people, if you want to send videos directly to folks on LinkedIn, grab a free dub account, 
go get the Chrome extension, and you can start sending videos within seconds. It's super easy. Um, my question for you, though, is that what is the evolution? What is the future of using video for pitching to find and land your next gig? What are you seeing, and what are the trends potentially within this space? Sure. So uh, I, I just think it's a great opportunity, right? I mean, uh, look, um, you get you, you you apply with your amazing resume. Somebody you know calls. You set up an interview. Or but prior to all of that, right? If somebody can go onto your LinkedIn or you know go to your site and you can you can see a video of of that person. Maybe they're talking about again something that they're a subject matter expert on. It just gives that recruiter and that hiring manager more reason to reach out to you. You know, they're hearing you talk about, you know, uh, whether whether it's maybe some leadership or whatever, again, but it's your way to showcase you in a very unique way that most people do not take advantage of. And I, I, again, with more people on LinkedIn, with uh, and, and that increases, but I mean, there's still people out there that think that really it's just for recruiters and for people that are looking for work. And we, I, I strive every day to try to change that. Um, but, but, but with video, again, it's just gonna, it's, you're going to separate yourself from the competition. And even if you're not searching for work now, you could be, and you're going to be doing all those right things because you're active on LinkedIn. And that way, again, when the time comes, you know, maybe there isn't really no transition because you know, maybe your positions, they're downsizing or whatever. You get on LinkedIn, you, you call up some of those connections that you've been actively working and it becomes a lot easier. So again, video is just going to separate you from everybody else not using video. How can folks find you? Uh, give me a web address. I want social sure. channels. Sure. Uh, you know, the, the, the best place is just to uh, find me on uh, LinkedIn. It's just David Alto, A-L-T-O. Uh, that's the easiest place. I'm on there every day. I connect with everybody and, every, and anybody. Not everybody does that. I say um, I've learned so much from so many unique people doing nothing similar to what I've done or what I'm currently doing that have really impacted my, uh, my life in 2019 here on LinkedIn. So, um, unless you're trying to sell me Bitcoin, I'm probably going to connect with you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And then uh, any, any social channels we should know about? Uh, you know, right now, LinkedIn is my home. Um, LinkedIn, that's it. Uh, LinkedIn is my home. Uh, AltoAdvance.com uh, is my website where you can see, you know, some of the services I provide. But I think it's pretty obvious if you look at my LinkedIn profile. But that's where really you can find me. Amazing. Well, listen, David, I really appreciate the time. Thanks uh, for sharing that insight. I had a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much, David.